What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another Euro 2020 fancy video. It's team selection time. I know things look and sound a little bit different. If you haven't seen it on Twitter or Instagram yet, I did get to go to the semi-final at Wembley, which was an amazing experience, but it does mean I'm not in my usual studio office uh, in my house. Uh, I've got my mic that I used to use when I first started making videos. I'm using my webcam, which isn't too bad, but the problem is there's no good lighting. There's no green screen or anything like that. And obviously all these backgrounds were made for green screen. So I do apologize. But it's the only way to get out a team selection video this week. So I'm going to talk about how I did in the semi-finals, then how I'm doing or ahead of the final, what transfers I'm making, which I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do already, and then who I'm going to captain. So if you do like it, please give it a like, hit subscribe for new around here, and let's jump into it. Okay, so let's talk about how I did in the semi-finals. So I only got 41 points, but obviously there's only four teams to choose from. Teams were quite similar, so 41 points was enough to get me a green arrow. I think I was around 6,800th now and 4,800th. So I'm back into the top 5K. And hopefully I can stay there. There's not too much to shout home about. Sterling got the assist for the penalty, which Kane missed as my captain. But then obviously he scored. Uh, and Dam's got scored that great free kick as well. One of the highlights was Emerson. I think he was the only Italian defensive player to get any points because he came off before the goal. And obviously, Morata was in my team as well. So he came on. I didn't get rid of him. There was no point. Um, always likely for him to come off the bench. And he got the goal that wiped the clean sheet. And Emerson had already come off. So that was pretty nice. But overall, no one else chipped in. But you're always going to find this, I think, at this point in the tournament because obviously, you've got to kind of go all in on some teams. I went all in on the England defence, uh, which didn't quite work out as well as planned. But to be fair, again, they didn't concede a goal from open play. It was just a great free kick that got it. So England defence was a pretty good choice, I think. It just didn't come through. And obviously, Simon got uh, uh, an extra point there for saves or whatever it was for the three points for him as well. So that's how we did in the semi-finals. Let's take a look at the final. Where I'm pretty sure I know what my transfers are going to be already. So we're in the final now. You get another five free transfers. Uh, and you can have a maximum of eight players from one team. So you could have eight Italians uh, and three English, eight English, three Italians. Or obviously, you can have a bit of a mix and match. Uh, depending on how you want to play it. This is the team as it stands right now. Um, so I've got three English defenders, which I already had. Now, obviously, you've got to remember, people's teams are going to be set up now basically based on what they thought was going to happen in the previous game. So I went kind of big on England because I thought they're going to beat Ukraine. Hopefully, then they can beat Denmark and they'll get all the way to the final, which is kind of handy in a format where where players get knocked out, they're kind of useless to you, right? So that's why I've got three English defenders already. Uh, my main problems are I've got no goalkeeper. So Simon and Stecklenburg have both been... Um, knocked out at this point. Obviously, Farron Torres has also been knocked out for Spain. And then on the bench, you've got Mela, Morata, um, Damsgaard, and Stecklenburg. So I need to get a goalkeeper. I probably need to take Morata out as well. The reason being is there's not really any other forwards that are going to start. Both these teams, England and Italy, play with one striker up front, Kane and Mobley, and they both have players flanking them, which is obviously Sterling plus one, uh, and then usually Insigne and uh, Chiesa right now. So there's no other striker. So I want to put that Morata spot down to the cheapest striker I can that lets me get the other players that I want um, as well as getting a goalkeeper and then basically I can make three other changes which will probably be to play 3-5-2 um, so Ferran Torres will have to go and I'll probably use a kind of luxury transfer to do Berardi to Chiesa obviously we are going to know the lineup before the, the deadline anyway, right? Because the deadline is the same time as kickoff. But not all of you will be able to wait that long, right? You might have other stuff to do. Maybe you're not watching the final. Um, but whatever it is, we're going to talk about the transfer. So I'm I'm not going to do any tinkering because I've got to be honest, this setup is, uh, is crazy. If you can see the kind of stuff behind the mess or whatever, I can't be tinkering at the same time. So what I've done is I've set up a new screen, which I'll just bring up now, um, which has got my transfers in. So I'm not marked who they are, but you can work it out, right? So Berardi to Chiesa is one of the moves um, I've gone for Pickford in goal now the reason I've done that is it's one England are in a final so it's not that I don't care but if England lose if I go all in on England like I have and they lose my first thought is not going to be what about my fantasy team right I think I'm just going to pick one England or Italy I've got more England players already than uh, Italian players like you know I've got Emerson on the bench or whatever but Berardi in my normal team is not even probably going to start um, so Chiesa comes in as well for that one uh, and then I've already got three English defenders. So rather than just do a mix and match and hope one gets a clean sheet, I'm just going to go all in. I'm going to go all in on four England defenders and hope they get the clean sheet. Obviously, this um, game, because the extra time is counted for the points, which we talked about before, is geared very well into players that are going to play 
past 90 minutes and also mostly for attackers as well they can get points at any time obviously once the defenders lose their clean sheet and 120 minutes to, to lock out another team is pretty difficult right so I'm not um you know I'm not expecting big things from my defense anyway but I'm probably going to go for Pickford in goal um Sterling and Kane I've already got in they're definitely two players that can play past 90 minutes I think there's certain subs that we know are going to happen right so we know that Chiesa will probably get swapped for Brady at some point we know Immobile will probably come off for Belotti um, we know that whoever starts on the right hand side for England will probably get subbed around the 60th or 70th minute like even when Grealish came on Sterling was the one moved to the right and then when he needed to make another change later on it was Grealish that came off that's just how much um, Sterling has played well this tournament but also how much Gareth Southgate trusts him so Sterling stays in I've put Sanchez in because he's the most expensive England midfielder apart from Sterling, who I already have. And it's basically, I'm going to bring in whoever plays that right side. I just I just don't know who else I would get. The thing with Italy is, they play like a 4-3-3, obviously. So it's Barella, Verratti, or Jorginho. I don't really want any of them. If I was going to go for one, it would be Barella. But I think I'd rather go for that England right-sided player and just get Mount in as well, because we know Mount's going to play a bit further forward. Yes, it's sometimes set up as a 4-2-3-1, but it, England players like a 4-3-3, uh, a Mount tracks back, etc. But he's on some set pieces as well. And like I said, I'm just going to go all in on England and hope for the best. It might be better, a better strategy to go for a few Italian players as well. But this is the way I'm going to set up. So my trance is in a Pickford for Simon, uh, Chiesa for Berardi, Mount and Sancho for Ferran Torres and somebody else who I'm going to think of in a minute. Um, Damsgaard actually and then I'm funding that by doing Morata to Raspadori the reason I'm going for him is he's basically the cheapest one that lets me fund these transfers I don't think I have any money to go for Belotti instead if I did I would definitely get him it's worth still having a few players on the bench if it fits in with your transfer strategy and obviously I haven't gone for Calvert-Lewin because I've got eight England players um, and I can't have any more and the chances are like Kane's leg would have to be literally falling off I think for him to come off the pitch like there's no way that he's not going to play 120 minutes minutes if that's what's needed of course Italy could win in 90 um, England might win in 90 and Kane gets injured and goes off but you know you can't predict those things right I think Italy are probably the favorites um, at this point like you can't write England off they're at home like Wembley is going to be a big difference maker they've played pretty well they've defended well um, you know they did concede a goal against them up I think I already said that that was a set piece from open play they have been difficult to break down but we know how good Italy's midfield is and that's going to cause problems for Phillips Mount and Rice um, and if they win that battle for the whole game, it's going to be a struggle for England. So you need to kind of decide how the game's going to go and go from there. You could mix a match, or I could put Emerson on instead. I could go for Barella instead of Mount, for example, um, and just go for one extra Italian player. But I, it's England. They're in a final. I play fantasy football for fun, right? Primarily, can be stressful and serious at times, especially with FPL. But for Euros, it's supposed to be a bit of fun over a short format. And my team are in the final. I may never see this again. I've never seen it before. I'm going to go all in on them. So I'm pretty sure they'll be my transfers. The only one, obviously, if the lineups are like crazy and there's loads of changes, then maybe they'll change. And obviously, Sancho could be Saka, it could be Foden, it could be Rashford, whoever plays on that right-hand side. Um, but I'm pretty confident this is going to be my team. And my captain will probably be Harry Kane because he's on penalties. He doesn't miss, apart from when he missed the other day, but he doesn't miss rebounds at least. Um... And he's going to play 120 minutes. The only other option for me is Sterling. I think Chiesa could get subbed. Insigne, Mount, Sancho, they're all players that are going to get subbed. Kane and Sterling are going to play as long as they can in that game. So there we go. That is my moves. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So there we go. That is it for this one. Thank you for watching. I know it wasn't quite how it usually is, like the green screen, the better sound, the better picture and stuff like that. Obviously, I have proper lights and like studio lights and everything when I usually record. So thanks for bearing with me. I wanted to get this video out because it's going to be the last Euro 2020 video. I'm not going to do a match day preview. I don't think there's enough to talk about. I think I've pretty much covered my thoughts on which players are going to start, who's likely to get subbed, etc. Strategies with going all in on defences, whichever way you want to play it. I'm not really sure what I can add with a match day preview. And obviously, Capsi, there's no switches or anything for this. So it really doesn't matter. So I'm not going to do one of those. Quite frankly, I don't want to record videos in this kind of setup too much because um, I, I'm not entirely happy with it. But also, I wanted to get the video out. So hopefully, it's okay. Uh, and from next week, we'll be fully back to FPL. I've already got a 
a video recorded which is ready to go. That'll probably go out on Monday, maybe Tuesday. We'll see what happens in the final first. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching over Euro 2020. If you are new to the channel, obviously, you've just been watching my Euro content. I do this all season, like pretty much every single day during the uh, FPL season, creating content. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for all the support during the Euros and thanks for the support specifically on this video. So I know it's quite not as, uh, not quite as um, good as normal, but hopefully it was uh, easy to follow and all that good stuff. Enjoy the final. Make your changes for a bit of fun, right? This is the final time to get up the, the ranks. Maybe go for a differential captain or defender, uh, whoever plays on the right for England, whatever it might be. Do something a little bit different. Try and get out the ranks. Good luck uh, to everyone in the Let's Talk FPL League as well. Uh, and I will catch you again next week. Come on, England.